Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Spooky Month 2, Electric Boogaloo. Look at my baby face. So I had to shave for my Halloween costume. Uh, here's some pictures of that. Hope you enjoy it. Um, we live in a society. Anyway, so yeah, I shaved. You guys are gonna have to get used to my baby face for a while. I know you guys probably haven't seen it in a while, but here it is, live and in color. Anyway, I'm not gonna dwell too much on that. Just know that my beard will come back in about, I don't know, a month or so. I know that I said I had a lot of spooky content for you guys, and even though it's past Halloween, I didn't want to disappoint you. So here's another movie review of yet another horrible movie. This movie was recommended by one of my friends, so I just wanted to start off by saying hello there. Thank you for ruining my life. Nymph is a 2014 film about a siren and a group of stupid people who go to an island and meet the siren, start dying, Cliche horror film. So this film was also known as Mamala, uh, which is the name of the island, and it was also known as Killer Mermaid, I'm assuming for American audiences. To be honest, I think they just got the script of a bad high school movie, and they just shot it through what seems to be bad stock footage of vacation. My YouTube videos are shot better than this, and most of the time they're blurry. Nymph, 2014. Let's see what you have in store for us. So we start off with the opening titles. Okay, this is epic. So we start out with these underwater shots of the Titanic for some f***ing reason. I'd much rather have seen Killer Mermaids in the movie Titanic than watch this movie. Then we're introduced to some expositional film reels with this song over it for some f***ing reason. Let's have a party, let's have some fun. I'm pretty sure this is just some footage of the cast between shots. Seriously, this scene goes on for the whole f***ing song. We get it. They're in love. And this is a dark sea adventure. Seriously, what is this music though? It's not that I can't understand a word that she said, but if English isn't your strongest language, then I recommend you make songs that aren't in English and instead in your main language. Just because I speak Spanish or Japanese doesn't mean that I'm gonna make an entire YouTube channel speaking Japanese or Spanish. So they end up going to their beach on their motorcycle, making out, like couples do. Her tits come out, and they start having sex, in a very, very public manner. Boobs! So anyway, this guy hears the song of the siren, and goes into the water to be with her. However, he just freaks out and dies. So the tits lady gets killed by the hash-slinging slasher. The sash ringing, the trash singing, mash flinging, the flash springing, ringing, the, the cr crash dinging, the... She gets impaled and for some reason they cut in between the actual impaling. So it just looks faker than it already did. Cut to the title. And then immediately cut to hot model standing in front of an airport. This is what I want to see after a horrible woman's death. Let's go. There's also no dialogue. And the music is either too quiet or not at all there. So these shots of her ass just don't feel earned. So she goes for a swim and we get more ass shots. Jesus f what is up with all these ass shots? I have half a mind to think that all these shots were actually used for a porno, but then they were like, eh, we're not making the porno, sorry. Uh, but here's a script for a horror movie that I think you guys might wanna do, and they're like, fuck it, we already got a bunch of ass shots. And also, why did she swim to the other side? She could have easily just walked there. Or was the director just too horny? It was like, no, we have to add all these ass shots. I need more ass shots! This entire conversation literally adds nothing to the plot. So let's skip it. Apparently this ass girl is named Lucy and she has this thing for this Albanian guy named Alex. He comes down and they all introduce themselves. Did you get a boob job or something, eh? Alex also introduces Lucy and Kelly to Yasmin, his fiance. But when we first hear their names, they're just so hard to understand. Whatever you say, Luce. Uh, this is just me, Kelly. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's the accents or just the bad audio quality. What about me? <laughs> Sure. So Kelly hears something out in the ocean. But do you really care? Do you really? No, you don't. It's just useless foreshadowing. We already know that there's a killer mermaid out there. We already know that they're all gonna die. So why the f is this scene important? It's not, by the way, if you were wondering. Some bad drone shots later, they end up boating to a port city. This is Rosse. Thank you for that exposition. Thank you so much. It's Ahab's problem. Who? Hmm? Sure. Moby Dick over there. I think everybody knows what I did last summer thanks to you. Making these references don't make your movie seem smart. Just because you're referencing better media that is scarier and more effective than your movie doesn't make this movie 
as scary or effective as the media you're referencing. You can't compare these things to your sh movie. So Yasmin can tell that Alex and Lucy had a thing in college. But do you really care? Do you though? I don't. So they all dance to bad Romanian music. <laughs> And I'm not saying that it's bad just because I don't speak Romanian. I listen to lots of foreign artists, but the soundtrack of this film, it's supposed to be this party music, right? And honestly, I think that showing people get f***ed up over party music is the worst way to show that there is a party going on. Because all the audience is doing is just waiting for the scene to f***ing end. Also, can we compare these two audio clips real quick? You can tell that they just played the music live then and there on the set and then tried to combine the two audio clips. It just doesn't work. We don't really care about this relationship. So why are we talking about this? So it turns out that Kelly's brother drowned when she was young. Oh, that's horrible. This is just bad setup for something that isn't even paid off at the end of the film. Excuse me. You're engaged. Also, they just follow the scene with the loud ass jump scare noise. <laughs> they use that as a transition for some reason. It doesn't make your film any scarier. Doesn't make the film scary at all. Just makes you annoying. So this random drunk guy was peeing publicly and the hash slinging slasher is back at it again. Okay, first of all, he's loud as fuck. How could no one in this bum fucking town heard that? Oh look. More ass shots. Also, what is with this music? The whole score is just these three notes being played over and over again. Oh look, we see some fishermen watching them ominously. It's almost as if the fisherman has something to do with the mermaids. Did you see that coming? Because I didn't, did you? Nope, didn't see it a mile away. So Kelly forgot her phone, and Yasmin also apologizes for barfing at the party. Things that have nothing to do with the major plot at hand. Alex ends up taking the whole crew down to an abandoned military base and sees an island down the stream. For some reason, they do that instead of, you know, going shopping or hiking or whatever else other actual real people do on their vacation. So we have a fake scare thinking that the mermaid gets the group when it's actually some weird guy. Are we supposed to believe that he just held his breath the entire time they were there? This scene isn't important. So we're just gonna skip it. So this creepy guy starts talking about Mamala and the fisherman says that they shouldn't go to the island. Mamala is a dangerous place. This guy just talks and blabbers just to make the runtime an hour and a half. So we're a third into the movie and we barely get any indication of something horror related. And I'm not lying. The first 30 minutes of this film is just ass shots and stock footage, you guys. Does he just have these missing posters in his pockets to show people? Why didn't the people in the movie just, you know, post them somewhere like on a pole or something that actually makes sense? So so this fisherman guy warns them about not going to the island, right? So what do you think they, they do? They go to the f***ing island. So Kelly doesn't go into the water still. The film tries to make some kind of conflict because of this kiss scene, but it also means that the film thinks that we actually care about them. Oh, uh, there's no signal. No phone service cliche. You know, I should just stop the movie right here. But I won't because it gets f***ing worse. And I had to sit down and watch this movie three times. Three times! So you guys have to suffer with me. So they see some guy, which to be honest, I mistook for the fisherman. He's just f***ing old. So we see this old guy walking with some buckets in the island that the fisherman specifically told them not to enter. Seems a bit suspicious. But their suspicions are proven right when he starts to dump body parts down the well. They all regret their choice to come into the island and begin their way out. I'm just kidding. That would have an indication that the characters would be smart. No. You're overestimating this movie too much. Kelly goes and takes some pictures so they can report the old guy. And in the picture, she sees someone at the bottom of the well. Could be a mermaid. But why would they do that? Why would they do that? Could just be a regular person. Who the f*** knows when the protagonist has the brain of a walnut. The boat they took to the island was shot by the old guy. And so he begins to shoot them down. <laughs> We get some bad and shaky chase scenes. And the group hides throughout the island. Alex runs with Kelly, and the weird guy runs with Yasmin and Lucy. What is the point of this point of view shot? Don't do that! Don't do that! Don't do it! Don't do that! Don't do that! Don't. Don't do that. If you were trying to kill someone, and someone takes your gun, would you stop when they simply ask you, Don't, don't do, do that! that. Oh That's your fault for not shooting the f***ing gun. Kelly convinces Alex that they should look for the rest of the group. We need to keep moving. We need to find the others. Find Yasmin and the others. It really took no convincing on her part at all. He was literally just like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, 
Yeah, sure, yeah. This isn't even a real horror movie sound. This is what a wannabe horror movie sounds like. This is what someone would use in a short film, not a feature length. So creepy guy tends to his wound while he's searching for the old guy. Then the creepy guy is also easily convinced that they should just find the others. We have to find them, we have to find them. I know, I'm down. Let's go this way. There's no conflict, none. So creepy guy follows the old guy. We find him sharpening his weapon of choice, a harpoon. That's the whole scene. Kelly looks around for Alex. And how she lost him is beyond me. Alex, this isn't funny. This isn't funny. Another horror movie cliche. So Alex is taken in by the song of the siren. We can't hear it as the audience, but apparently Alex does. So Alex finally finds his way into this chamber where he hears the singing. We see some dead body parts as he sees the mermaid, but we don't. Probably the best decision this movie made. You'll see what I mean later. So then the movie tries to put out more horror movie tropes like gore and dirty bathtubs. We see some more missing posters of people and it's assumed that the old guy killed them. Then we find out that the old guy and the fisherman know each other, which is also the moment that I figured out that these are two Two different people. They go down the well to get Alex, and Yasmin gets some head. And so does the old guy. This scene is literally just in there for shock value, just for some gore and a few scares from the audience. The old guy throws Yasmin's head into some room. I actually don't understand why he does this. Why doesn't he just, you know, feed it to the mermaid? So creepy guy apparently has a map of the island. I don't understand why, it's not explained whether he took it from the old guy or if he just had it. Either way, they just use it to escape. Lucy and Kelly end up looking for Alex, leaving the creepy guy behind. Come on, let's go find something so we can end this, okay? Why are you breathing so heavily? They literally were just walking around, they weren't even running. Why are y'all out of breath? So this weird guy is drawn to the siren song and Kelly slaps him out of it. Literally. Come on, we have to get out of here. Let's go. Why are you giving the guy that was acting irrational a f***ing axe? When would this ever be a good idea? Weird guy acts weirder and we're finally introduced to the mermaid. An hour into this f***ing movie. Jesus Christ, I think the special effects are scarier than the fact that she's a mermaid. So the old guy takes the weird guy by the shoulder. I'm sorry, can we just see that again? Lucy sees Alex's dead body in the water. While the two guys fight it out, Lucy falls into the water with the mermaid. Weird guy chops the old guy in the back, and Kelly and the weird guy run away. Excuse me, what? That sounds a lot like another sound effect in another movie that we reviewed. So the mermaid cuddles the old guy and begins to cry. <laughs> to be honest, she just sounds like Ariana Grande to me. So the old guy is still finding them along with the mermaid. They try escaping through an underwater passage. Then we get another fumbling with keys cliche. After five minutes of absolutely nothing but running away from this old guy, we get absolutely no tension. Either way, the fisherman finds them, leading them away from the island, telling them that he will explain everything later. They make their way to the shore, but stop halfway for some exposition. There were three small islands where once people believed mermaids lived during sailors to their death. One of the three islands was actually Mamula. And even this entire movie's lore is based on a cliche. A bunch of islands where mermaids lived and led sailors to their death. That's stuff that's written in books. It's myth. Not all books are made up. You know this, right? So now, for some reason, there's a big old storm. Now all the mermaids with their bad CGI come to shore. Kelly then helps them board onto shore, but oh no, Kelly has to swim. No one could have seen this coming. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was this? <laughs> How the f am I supposed to take this movie seriously? So Kelly stabs a b in one of the worst action sequences I've seen to date. It's all underwater and disorienting, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't meant to be filmed this way. But oh no, she's alive! So the fisherman traps her in a net, and that stops her. Until she just rips it up, like anyone else would do in this situation. I'm sorry, can we not have vagina flapping as a sound effect? So then the fisherman kills the mermaid, stabbing her and leaving her on the surface to die. Then Kelly gives the fisherman this, which means absolutely nothing to us. I didn't even catch the part where she took it from the old guy. So the old guy comes back and tends to the mermaid, 
So now it turns out that there's an entire army of mermaids that are on their way to Mamala. And the fisherman kills the old guy. In the worst way possible. And why the f*** did his death have to be the worst looking, fakest looking, and the last one? And then they cut to the exact same title from the beginning of the film. What an absolute f***ing atrocity this movie was. That was a waste of an hour and a half. Now was this a good movie? No. And if you think this is a good movie, you don't watch good movies. Besides the fact that all the main characters are unlikable, this movie has literally nothing else to stand on. The music is either too quiet or not there at all. The special effects are horrendously horrible, oh lord. And the plot is non-existent. The majority of the scenes could just be taken out. This film has no sense of cinematography, tension, or god forbid, plot or payoff. There's nothing satisfying about this film. This film wasn't even a so bad that it's good kind of film. It's just bad. And that sucks because of all the interviews that I saw about this movie, everyone that was working on set was actually excited about it. Everyone seemed to be excited about this project, but none of the characters made smart decisions, none of the production choices made any sense, and the movie lacks because of this. And there, that was my review on Killer Mermaid. If you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe because I have other kinds of content much like this coming your way. A special thanks to all of you guys for helping me reach 1,000 subscribers. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but to me, it is a milestone. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be continuing to make this kind of content. So thank you guys so much for helping us reach 1,000 subs. Seriously, it's mind boggling. Now join me next time when I chop off my head in order to summon King Payment. Bye-bye.